So I bet you're wondering what's in the, uh, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do that joke. Too easy. I've got comedic standards, you know? And I really just shouldn't. But why shouldn't I? After all, it is mine. My precious. Ha! Didn't see that one coming, did ya? Completely different reference entirely. What's in the box? All right, here's the deal. Today's video is gonna be a little bit out in left field, but don't worry. Something's got me extremely excited and it's still related to our miniature hobby. So without further ado, let's strap in and get rolling. And to put the cart before the horse, this video is about this box. Well, not exactly this box, more what's inside this box. But like most things in life, the journey is more important than the destination. So before we get to what is inside this box, let's talk about how I procured it. Each year, my friendly local game store, D6 Games, holds an annual gaming auction where people from all over the area can bring in their old gaming stuff and put it up on the auction for others to bid on. At this auction, there's everything from a wide array of board games to RPG supplements and books to miniatures, to war games, to terrain, to anything hobby that people want to bring in and sell. So each year I go through all my stash of things and find things that I forgot I own or I just don't think I'm ever gonna get around to using. And I go and I put those up on the auction. And then I show up the day of the auction, take a look at everything that's out there for sale. I get myself an auction number and I get ready to start bidding. Now the store does a good job of putting pictures of all the items up on their Facebook page leading up to the auction, but typically there's not as many pictures or detailed as I'd like. So I like to show up a little bit early before the auction, take a look at everything that might catch my eye and make a list of the items I want to bid on and how safe I feel in going up to my max bid amount. But this year, I actually brought my camera along to take some footage of the event and I didn't give myself enough time to really thoroughly look through and think through each items I wanted to bid on or not. Now, if I'd have had more time to dig through everything, I probably would have bid on more things and walked away with more items. Maybe even this Forge World Warhound Titan, which included a bunch of gun arm options. Granted, the starting bid on the Titan was $450 and I have no reason to own one, but some of the other Warhammer guys that were at the auction told me that the total price of that thing was well over $800 and it didn't even sell at the auction. So uh, maybe if people want me to do a video on that, I could contact the seller and try to track it down. Each year, there's a ton of different miniatures that end up going on the auction block. There were some awesome, hard to find things like an old collection of metal sisters of battle. And I did end up bidding on a lot of stuff. I wasn't about to let everyone get a steal on everything. I'll buy anything nerdy if the price is low enough. And now that we have an understanding of what a gaming auction is, I wanna take a minute and talk about why it's important to have different events like this in our local gaming stores. I probably don't need to tell you that going through COVID was tough on a lot of small to mid-sized local businesses and gaming stores got hit hard. A lot of what draws us to them is the ability to go and game in store and to check out all the new releases and just peruse through the shelf. Well, with COVID, a lot of that foot traffic and most to all of that in-store gaming was shut down either entirely or greatly diminished for a year or more. So these small businesses need our money more than ever. And so finding different ways to support our local store is great, which is why I wanted to share why something like a gaming auction is a great idea for any local store. Because when I win a lot at the auction, at the end of the auction, I go up and I pay the store. Let's say I bought $100 worth of product. I'm giving that gaming store $100. And then the seller of that $100 product gets a $100 gift card to the store. Now I know what you may be thinking. The people that sold the items don't even get the cash. 
Well, think about it this way. We're all gamers and we're gonna buy more gaming stuff. Turning my old stuff into a gift certificate for new stuff at that gaming store means that we're continuing to flow through money through our local stores to support them. So if you've got a local gaming store that you wanna support, you can send them over this video and see if it's something that they might be interested in. Not only does it build our local gaming community by bringing people together and getting cool games into new hands, but it also helps support that store to keep its doors open. Oh, I got an idea. What if we filled the comment section of this video with the names of awesome local stores that we love and what cities we can find them in? That way, if you're out traveling for the holidays or you're just planning on spending some time in a different city driving through, maybe you can visit an awesome store. Or maybe there's an awesome one in your area already and you just didn't know it existed. You can peruse through the comments and see if you find a new place to find some hobby goodies. All right, enough pussyfooting around. Let's get into this box. I ended up winning four auctions this year. And like I said, I bid on about 20 some, but I wasn't sure how high I wanted to go. One of these I spent much more money than I had expected. First are two kind of inconspicuous little Tupperware containers. Now these I got for a steal of only $5 total. These are filled with high elf bits from Warhammer Fantasy. And these are in plastic and there's just a ton of extra bits, including some dwarven shields, some random orc things. Here's a random metal orc head. Um, there's full figures. There's probably enough for maybe 10 to 20 full figures in here. Some of them are mostly put together, but it looks like they were built with super glue so I could snap them off. Anytime you can get bits that catch your eye for a good price, I recommend doing that. This guy is blowing a horn that looks like a bird. I wonder what sound that makes. Today's sponsors got me rubbing my hands together like when you just see that holiday spread you're about to sit down and gorge yourself on. And then you gotta put on your sweatpants because you can't button your jeans after. Counterspell Miniatures is the new miniature line brought to us by 1985 Games. They had a Kickstarter last December and now for the first time these minis are available on their website. The quality of these miniatures are just amazing and they fit together perfectly, which is not always the case with resin minis. I love when companies combine high-end miniature products that also can be used for gaming purposes. This means that I don't have to fight the model to have a pretty looking paint job when I just want to get my model on the table for my D&D game. And since it's the holiday season, our Lord and Savior, the Bone Behemoth, is blessing upon us a gift. That's right, you can get 15% off your entire order or free shipping on a purchase $60 or more. Your choice, just enter the coupon code on your screen right now at checkout for your deal. And there's one more exciting thing I have to mention. Starting this month, Counterspell Miniatures is starting their own monthly resin miniature subscription box. That's right, each month you get an awesome little package that shows up at your door filled with high-end resin models from the greatest companies around the world that make them, including Counterspell Miniatures as well. A big thank you to 1985 Games for supporting the channel and putting out these amazing little models. Let's get back to the video. Okay, next up is a big lot of Warhammer Underworlds. It includes all the cards and the tokens and the dice and everything from the base game. And it's a total of six separate war bands. I already own two of these war bands, the standard ones that came in the original Shade Spire set, but those are still on their sprue. I've never gotten around to build them. So the way I figure it is I could use these ones since they're already built and I could use those ones that are still on the sprue for bits or to customize my other models later. The other war bands I do not own. And as you may or may not know, these things get discontinued not too long after they're originally released. So these are older ones and I don't think I could pick them up anywhere. I got this entire lot with six war bands for 30 bucks. The way I look at that is it's five bucks a war band. That's a heck of a price for Warhammer models. And somebody already went to the extent 
to put them together. Now there are a couple of wicked gaps on these. These are the push fit models where they have the pegs that go into the holes. And I like to cut off the peg entirely so I get a nice smooth fit and then I put my plastic cement right on to build them. All right, next, this is a pretty straightforward one. It is a bag full of new sprues. This is actually a bunch of Death Guard models. I don't know why I needed more Death Guard. I already own a buttload of Death Guard, some of which still isn't even built, but this is an entire half of the Dark Imperium box set for Death Guard, amazing models, great box set, as well as two more of the big old plague drones. Why I bought this? Well, because it was 15 bucks. I was like, that's like basically free. Don't tell me you wouldn't take this for 15 bucks right now. You totally take it. So yeah, more Death Guard. I don't know what I'm going to ever do with these, but I have them. And last but not least is the lot that got me the most excited. In fact, I got into a little bit of a bidding war over this lot with another gentleman and ended up paying 80 bucks for this. So what is it? It is a whole bunch of confrontation minis by the company Rackham. Now in the early 2000s, Games Workshop didn't make the best models out there. That belonged to Rackham. Rackham came out with metal models with the most amazing detail, the lifelike sculpts. Oh, and by the way, their box art paint jobs were insane. They were the first to start integrating non-metallic metal and realistic textures on the paint jobs of their box art. Back in the early 2000s, I came across these models long before I ever started miniature painting, and I bought some of them because I thought they were so awesome and I wanted to use them for D&D characters. I even thought about starting miniature painting back then, about 20 years ago. If only I had YouTube to show me how to paint minis back then, I would have started. Okay, so these are really hard to find if you can get them. Sometimes you can get good deals on them, but most of the time they're looking at 20, 30 bucks a model if you can find them. Look at, there was even a little bonus plastic dude in here. Free stuff. There's some partially painted dwarves in here. Pretty good start. And then a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 clamshell packages of models still new on the sprue, including the limited edition Kyrus the Somber. This is a figure I did own and I gifted it to wonderful Brent from Goobertown Hobbies when he came to visit one time and we did a little mini swap. He was one of my favorite models though, and I'm glad to get another one. Maybe I can paint it up and see how it looks compared to Brent's. So yeah, like I said, this was a nostalgia buy for me. It felt like a rare thing that you're not usually going to get to see. And one other gentleman thought the same thing, but I was not to be outdone. And now that I have everything out in front of me, I realize that I don't have any projects or video plans in mind for any of this stuff. That means it's probably going to collect dust in my closet of shame, unless you can help me out. Is there anything here that gives you an inspiration or ideas or something you'd like to see in a video? Let me know in the comments below on that as well. I will read through all of those and if I find something that excites me, I will put it to you. So get your wrinkly brains thinking on that for me. Thanks for hanging out today and going through my gaming auction haul with me. If you like the channel and want to support it, there's a couple ways you can do so. First and foremost, you can click on my Patreon link down below and check out the awesome rewards you get by supporting me on Patreon. Things like access to my private Discord server where we can talk about painting projects and access to my weekly vlog videos. I also still have my 15% off everything sale going on on my merch site. Just enter coupon code ninjanbf 21 at checkout and you get 15% off everything. So check out some shirts and other goodies there. And finally, you can support me by using my affiliate links in the code below when you're out there making any of your online hobby purchases. Most of those will give you a discount as well as supporting me. So it's a win-win. I will be back next Friday with a spicy video that has been stewing in my brain for well over a year. So until then, make sure you find some time to slay the gray and not just buy more shit like me. Where the person that built them didn't snip off the little, what are those fucking things called? All right, get back on here. I'm gonna put you away.
Fuck, I'm missing two of the drone bases. There's like some bonus cat fur in the sprues as well. So, there's that.